Hey guys, what is happening? So, um, this morning when I woke up, I, um, looked to read what was happening in the news in America, in the world, and, um, in an attempt to just try to understand everything that is taking place here in this country and everywhere else. And, um, I came across some things that I really, three things that I really just blow my mind. Uh, the first being that people are incredulous that Donald Trump is sending the National Guard in to quell rioters as if this is the first time in the history of the United States that any president has ever done that. We'll get to that. Second, that somehow only in the past three years has racism truly existed in this country. We'll get to that too. And the third that bothers me the most is the question that people keep on asking and asking and asking. And it is, where are our leaders? Our leaders need to do this, our leaders need to do that. And I just have one question that I'd like to ask everybody at this time is um, in regards to sending in the National Guard, in, in regards to racism, in regards to leadership in America. Where the fuck are you learning your history? Where are you learning your history that you think what is happening now is any different than what has happened since 1776 and before? Seriously, you wanna talk about sending in the National Guard? You know how many riots there have been in America? The thing, the problem with history is that when we, when we, when we learn about history, we learn the greatest hits. We're like, ooh, the Revolutionary War, that was great. Ooh, you know, the War of 1812. All of this fighting, all of this, all of this celebration of finding freedom and independence while brushing under the rug all of the other th stories of people that fought and fought and fought and died for their freedom and their independence, many of which have yet to experience it here in this country and in this world. So when you talk about Trump sending in the federal, federal um, the National Guard, um, during the race riots, not even the race riots, the draft riots of 1863, Abraham Lincoln sent 4,000 troops into New York City to quell the riots. 250,000 people rioted, burnt down the whole entire city, well not the whole city, but burnt down a lot of the city. He sent in 4,000 Union soldiers to fight against people that didn't want to be drafted to fight in the war in the first place. And guess what those Union soldiers were? people that had just survived the Gettysburg, the Battle of Gettysburg. So you go there and you think, what the fuck am I fighting for? If this is still happening, what am I fighting for? And you know, before that we have the Monroe Doctrine, which was like, we are a belligerent country. And then after, so we had rebellion, slave rebellions before the Civil War. After the Civil War, there was uprisings against Jim Crow. People were lynched everything and we had these leaders there were actually gag rules in the congress that people weren't able to talk about the problems that were inherent in slavery up leading up until the civil war gag rules we're seeing that now with our censorship and if you don't think you're being censored anytime you use a word that is not consistent with the narrative you kind of get pushed aside so you have to invent new words, which is a beautiful thing because it helps us develop language instead of as we go back to what we said before, when people are just like this, or they like it, or, or respond with an emoji. So yeah, so we talk about the uh, civil, I mean, the, um, the draft riots. And then the amount of, if you guys just looked at, at the history of America from the time that this country was born and beforehand in its gestation to where it is now, you will be shocked, not even shocked, maybe it won't surprise you, to learn that this is the way we have always been. This is no different than the way that it always was. The only difference is that now, and people are always talking about this, now we have videos. Fuck your videos, fuck your videos, because guess what? You had people, they were writing about it in their poetry. They were writing about it in all of their autobiographies. Frederick Douglass, you learned about Harriet Tubman. And then we had music. We were brought music. We were, we were, we, we were blessed with jazz, which was the first expression, not even the first expression, of, of blacks trying to tell their story to a greater world, to a bigger audience. And then we had the blues. And then we had Motown, and then we had hip hop. 
Before there was videos, before there was social media, there was music and there was poetry and there was writing and there it was in the history books and we did not open them. And when we listened to the music, did we really listen? Did we answer Marvin Gaye when he said, what is going on? No. And now we are in this conundrum of this place where we think that this is the only time this has ever happened. And it's not. It's not. There was after after the World War after World War One with Woodrow Wilson. By the way, I thought for the longest time that Woodrow Wilson was this um, hero of a president that he was educated and he spoke about isolationism and not wanting to get America involved in the war. I mean, I, that we even spoke about the fact that he, you know, had sheep on the White House lawn to to you know make clothes for the soldiers and everything. But what we don't learn about is how intent he was to keep segregation alive in this country in 1918. What happened in 1919? Red Summer. The Chicago riots where a little black boy was stoned to death and drowned in Lake, in Lake Michigan. Days and days and days of riots ensued for months. 30 cities across America had race riots, things were burned, things were looted, everything was destroyed, and still we got no further than where we were before that. But guess what we learned in the history books? The Roaring Twenties, where after the war, everybody did so well, and then only thing that happened was the Great Depression. Who the fuck do you think that affected? All of us. And we are still feeling the repercussions of it. And then there was World War II and you have these black people who fought and, and won the war. By the way, just so we're clear, just, just so we have a better understanding, America did not win World War II. We were not the fucking heroes we made ourselves out to be. Look up Dresden. Remember what happened in Hiroshima. So seriously, before you sit there and pat yourself on the back for being American, look at what that means to be an American. It's easy to go and fly a flag. It's easy to sit there and say all of these things and, and say that we're patriotic, but what are we supporting in the meantime? So yeah, in the middle of World War II, there was the Detroit riots. 6,000 National Guard soldiers were brought in to quell them. And even then afterwards, nothing changed. Let's go to 1955. Oh, by the way, in all this time, Almost every year, there is a race riot, there is a rebellion, there are people struggling to be free, to have equality, to do all that other stuff that the Constitution tells us is what is our God-given right. So yeah, 1943, the Detroit riots, after that, more and more riots. I mean, have we in the history books, do we even learn about the whites that went into Topeka and just burned down all black businesses? No, we don't. Why would we learn about that? Do we really learn about the civil, civil rights movement? No, we learn about specific histories. We learn about specific dates. And we don't see it for the bigger picture that it actually is. We don't see it for the tensions that rise up. We just see it as a moment in history, a blip in the radar. And then we think that, okay, so the Civil Rights Act got signed in 1964. They had the right to vote. Great. Guess what? Four years later, the man who led them there was shot. He was shot. Like, honestly, shot. And still, the things that he was fighting for, equality, justice, the war in Vietnam went on for four more years, maybe even six more years, and racism continued even after that. 70s, 80s, you think that these riots, the, 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 the things just stopped, that racism ceased to exist? No. The war on drugs came in. After the Vietnam War ended, the war on drugs came in. Guess who that affected the most? And then we have the Rodney King beating and the race riots in LA. And after that, there was more and more and more and more and more. And it never stopped. It never ended. Nothing has stopped. Nothing has changed. But the thing that we have to be responsible for is where we learn our history and what history that we learned and what we learned from that history. Because obviously it is absolutely fuck all because we keep on doing it and doing it and doing it. And the only thing that we're doing with it is defining menace. So when you sit there and you're in an uproar about the looting 
and the riots and, and, and other options, open up a history book. Listen to Sam Cooke. Listen to Muddy Waters. Listen to Nina Simone. Listen to Billie Holiday. Listen to every single voice that has spoken up for decades, for centuries. Listen to all of them because this isn't the first time they've been screaming. This is not the first time they've been shouting. And stop pretending that history is this beautiful thing or this pretty thing that, you know, when the 4th of July comes around, we're like, America. Really think about what America is because I really truly believe, and this is something that we need to be responsible for, we need to dismantle everything that we've ever learned or know that what we've learned is only on the surface. It's only on the surface. We haven't even gotten to the depths of what these things really mean. And if you really want to understand something, if you really want to make a difference, you have to learn where people are coming from. You have to learn what their experiences are, what it means in today's world. You can't just sit there and be up in arms because people are protesting in this country now. Because that that's disregarding the fact that people have been protesting in this country for decades, for centuries. And really we haven't got any further except we just happen to have air conditioning and cell phones seriously just if you're gonna do anything today open up a history book do some research learn about all of the times the National Guard has been called in on people that just wanted to see changes happen in the world Read about the um, civil rights movement. Read about the people that really spoke up. Read the poetry of Langston Hughes. Read Maya Angelou, Toni Morrison. R uh, listen to everyone that has ever spoken and raised their voice about these issues. And share it. Talk to people. Understand because it's only through understanding are we going to ever get somewhere because if you just sit there and say I don't understand why this is happening You're taking yourself out. You're taking the responsibility away from yourself You're taking the idea that this is happening to someone else when in actuality it's happening to all of us in, in one way or another and 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 it, I don't know just Try to learn something and not just learn what blip there is on the news or what headline happens to be today. Learn something, the history of this country and what it means to be a citizen of this country and a citizen of this world. And then ask yourself, are you proud to be an American? Ask yourself if you're proud of its history and then ask yourself, where have our leaders ever led us? And then when you're done asking yourself those questions, ask yourself just one more. Where can we go from here?